Hi everybody, Tom Chapman here, and welcome back to my Map Tool tutorial series. Today we're going to talk about getting things set up initially for Map Tool to make your life easier in the long run. Now this is a revised video of an initial setup video I did before. Most everything is the same. The thing that I've changed though is uh, the image files, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about that, and it required doing a whole new video. So this is, these are just a few quick basic things and I'm going to get started with how to get quick access to Map Tool so you don't have to find it. Now Map Tool is not an installed program so unless you set it up when you put it on your computer it's not going to have a start menu option, it's not going to be on your desktop, it's not going to be anything like that. So I'm going to show you how to set up a quick link or a shortcut on your desktop so you don't have to go digging for Map Tool each time. In the last video I gave you the link to download and I've also included it in every video. So once you have it downloaded, you need to find it and unzip it. And once you all have all that stuff done and it's unpacked and ready to go, then we can be at this point where we make a shortcut. Now Map Tool is a Java-based program and so it's self-executable. So all we really need to do is get the launcher. So here I am. I'm in my file explorer and I know where I put my map tool. I put it under RP tools, under map tool 1.4.0.5, and right here is what I'm looking for this launcher option. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to hit copy, and then I'm going to go to my desktop. Once I'm here on my desktop, I'm going to right click again and I'm simply going to hit paste and now I have my launcher option now if you look right here I already have a map tool option all I did was exactly what you saw I just renamed it map tool so it was easier to find I'm going to delete that and I'm going to double click on this to open the launcher once my launcher is open I just need to make sure that I have the correct jar file available and you'll see that right here I have map tool dash 1.4.0.5 if this doesn't match the one that you downloaded you just need to click on this and it'll open up the containing folder you just need to make sure you click on the correct map tool and open once that's done we just click launch map tool With Map Tool open, I'm going to show you how to set something under your, under your preferences. And this is one of the first things you should probably do because vision is a great thing in this game, but sometimes it can mess with uh, how the game runs, how the program runs. It can get a little buggy. And so I found that coming up here to Edit, then down to Preferences, and then under this Maps section, we have a new map distance. Now when you first get this, it's set to something like 1,000 or 10,000. It's some really high number, and this is feet. Now while that is realistic, it, it really slows down the game. So I find that for most situations where we're not playing on a football field, new map vision distance, setting it to 100, saves a lot of time later and helps the program run slower. So just make sure that your new map vision distance is set to 100 and click OK. The first time you open Map Tool, you're going to see all sorts of things around the edges. Like you might see Library up here on the left and this little eyeball. Over here on the right, right, you might see Global and Campaign. Down at the bottom, you'll see Chat and Tables. And these are all different windows that when you hover over, show you this. This is the Chat window. These are where Campaign Macros would be, Global Macros. But for right now, we're going to be dealing with the library tab. So I'm going to hover over the library. And before we get too far, I want to show you what all these buttons up here at the top do. So first we have the toggle floating. If you click that, it just shoots this window out onto uh, Map Tool itself. So you can kind of move it around if you don't want it to be attached at the side. I like it being attached at the side, so I'm going to leave it there. Open up library again. Next we have minimize, so if you click on this and you want it to go away, minimize just sends it back over. Pinning it or toggling auto hide, if you want this to stay open, so for example when I click out, the library closes. I can pin it 
and that way when I click out it stays open so I can look at it easier and this last one you may not use a lot but I wanted to go over what it is this completely exits out of the window now here's the issue is now it's gone from over here so if this ever happens to you for example you close your library or you close one of your macro tabs or something like that then all you need to do is come back up here to window and I close library I'll just click on it and it opens it back up now the cool thing about this is the library shows you it has a whole bunch of images that you can use in map tool that I've loaded in it's really simple so the default library came with map tool and so I clicked on tokens and all I have to do is if I want like this hero I'll click and I drag him out and now I have a hero out on my open map there's a lot of different things that are hidden in here uh, real quick I wanted to show you textures because this is kind of fun so when you have textures textures allow you to color the background so right now the background texture for this map is grass right here but let's say for some odd reason I wanted a patch of ocean in the middle of my grasslands let me show you how textures work so I click on my painting tool up here my drawing tool I'm going to click left on that go to texture click on ocean and then I also need to make I'll write a click on this one so that the inside is ocean 2 Oops. if I don't click both of these then it'll make the border an ocean and the inside white and then I'm just gonna draw an ocean and that's a texture. Textures come in really handy, for example, if you want to go to a new room and you want it to look different from the last room. Uh, it adds a little bit of flavor to your maps as you build them. Now it also gives some very basic things like uh, if you ever use health bars, the health bars are here. It gives you some dice. Um, you know your standard d4 all the way up to d20 and your percentile dice if you want to use cards for anything it comes with a deck of cards some states to apply to tokens uh, and different things ones I use a lot of the markers here but it doesn't provide much there's very little here and if you actually want to use a lot of image files to like let's say put chests in rooms or put a bed in the room or anything like that we need quite a bit more and that's where we're going to go to adding a resource to our resource library so to add a resource to the resource library all I need to do is come up here and click on file and go add resource to library the first thing I want to show you is if I click down here on this map tool symbol this RP tool symbol here on the lower left it's going to open up all these options for me to download now these are free for you um, I have not gone through any of these so I have no idea what's in most of these I know there's some videos out there on what all of this stuff does and what all these images are but if you want a good starter st uh, starting point you can download one of these and all you do is click it and then hit install and it'll download it and add it to your resource library over here now the other option is to upload a map mapping pack to map tool if you go in the description below you're gonna find a link uh, that I will try to keep up to date with as many mapping packs as I can find now these mapping packs are not small one of the mapping packs in the link is a 5 gigabit, gigabyte mapping pack and it has all sorts of things for you to use all sorts of objects that you can use in your maps all sorts of textures tokens everything like that once you have it downloaded and you know where it is, all you need to do is click this browse button here. And I know that mine is under map tool extras and mapping accessories. Now I have downloaded two separate mapping packs. I have mapping, which is the smaller of the two. It's less than a gig. And then mapping pack is uh, well over five gigs. So I'm going to add mapping for right now. And I'm going to select the top file folder that I want it to go to. If I select anything underneath, I have to add all of these one at a time. So I'm just going to go with mapping and click open and then install. What this does is if we look down here in the lower left, it's adding all of these images to map tool. And you only have to do this once. 
But know that every time you add a new resource to a folder, so if I were to go back into the, that mapping folder and add one image, I would have to come back and re-add the entire mapping folder in order to get that one image. So just know that that's how that works and it's, it does not automatically update. So I'm going to let that finish here for a moment and then I'm going to show you how to do it one more time. If I look down here now, the files are all uploaded into Map Tool and I can add another one. So to review, I'm going to go up to File, Add Resource to Library. I'm going to pick my local directory, Browse, go to my Map Tool Extras where I keep them, and I'm going to select my bigger file, Mapping Pack, and I'm going to start that going. Now this is much bigger, so it's going to take a lot longer to do. So while it's going at that, I thought I'd share with you uh, one last thing about this. If you are playing uh, anything from Wizards of the Coast, what's really cool is a while back, someone uploaded and added, or someone took all of those monster images from the monster manual, like the third edition and fourth edition monster manuals, and they made them all into tokens organized by... Uh, alphabetically. So there's angels in here, there's animated objects. So it's really cool so you can take these and just click, drag, and drop and now you have a devil hellcat out on your map. And that makes it easy for you to use some already pre-generated tokens. But there's a lot in here. You could spend hours upon hours looking through this stuff. One real quick thing, if you know there's something in a file folder, but you can't remember where it is. Let's say you want to find a, uh, some sort of stone for a texture. Make sure you click search subdirectories and type in the word that you're looking for. So in this case, stone. So it'll come up with up to 1,000 results for stone, and I can look through this without having to hunt through my file folders. So I'm going to let this run out here at the bottom for now, but I hope this has been helpful for you. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and thanks for watching.